Hi, whenever you guys are ready, you can take your first questionnaire. And then once you finish, just move along and we'll do the presentation. Thanks. Hi, <laughs> so you guys are probably wondering, who is that little floating head in the corner? So my name is Elizabeth Kolich. I am a physician assistant student, a PA student at South University in West Palm Beach, Florida. I am doing this presentation as a portion of my graduating project and also just to raise awareness in my community about sunburns and sun exposure, skin cancers, how to protect yourself and what happens if you don't. So I hope, you know, you guys can take something away from this that you can use in your everyday lives. Um, because you're about to find out what happens if you don't. So first thing, what's a PA? Uh, these are just some pictures of my classmates and I uh, when we were a couple months back or maybe about a year or so back during a casting lab. Just some pics to show. We do some cool things like putting on casts. And I always found that the best way to explain what a PA does is to compare it to a doctor. So everyone knows a doctor does four years of undergraduate pre-med coursework four years of medical school, and then additional training in residency or fellowship. That um, allows them to be experts in their field with the highest um, scope of practice, and they practice in that same specialty for the entirety of their career because they are a specialist in that area. A PA uh, also goes through four years of undergraduate pre-med coursework, and then we do two and a half years of a medical school equivalent where we learn about 90% of what a doctor learns in med school but in about half the time. So it's known for being really rigorous and fast paced. We have optional additional training after we graduate, but it's not required like a doctor has. Because of this, we are broadly trained. We can jump from different specialties. I can work in primary care one day and then I could go work in surgery the next. We write prescriptions, diagnose and order tests. We interpret results. We perform procedures and exams. We are independent practitioners. Um, but like we learned, our education level isn't as high as a doctor, so we are limited. I can't go do brain surgery on someone. Uh, so you can kind of see where some of the limitations come into play. So now that you understand what a PA is, let's move on to the bulk of the presentation. So this is something I actually think to myself when someone tells me they don't wear sunscreen or they're not worried about getting sunburn. I think you actually think that you are tougher than the sun, like this fiery ball of radiation. No one is tougher than the sun. Skin cancer doesn't discriminate. Sunburns can occur and happen to anyone. Anyone can get skin cancer. So over the course of the next, you know, 20 minutes, we'll talk about sunburns, obviously, and we'll talk about what happens if you get them, specifically skin cancer, because that's our biggest concern. We'll talk about photo aging and wrinkles, risk factors to skin cancers, and then how to properly properly protect yourself, how to use sunscreen, how to, you know, seek shade. Those are all things to know that will come in handy. So first thing, what's a sunburn? So there are short-term and long-term effects and dangers associated with sunburns. Short-term, it's a radiation burn. You're physically burning your skin, just like you would burn your hand on a stove. The radiation emitted by the sun is coming through the ozone, absorbing into our skin cells and burning them. So that's why you get the redness, the inflammation, swelling, blisters, uh, really dry, itchy skin a couple of days after a sunburn. So those are the short-term effects of a sunburn. Worse are the long-term effects, and that is skin cancer. So... I'm going to put my head over here, the two of us, best friends. So everyone's heard about cancer. Um, and essentially, it's just the multiplication of cells. You make tumors, and then those tumors can spread if not treated throughout your body, and they can kill you. So the same thing applies to skin cancer. You have this intense UV radi radiation emitted from the sun that's absorbing into your cells, affecting your DNA. Your DNA is mutating and changing, and your cells start rapidly growing and multiplying and creating these tumors, and then they eventually spread. So exposure to UV radiation to the sun, whether it's cumulative, meaning over your whole life or from having sunburns, causes your cells to mutate. And every time they mutate, there's a chance that they continue to mutate to become a skin cancer. So who's most at risk? We'll touch more on this later on. We have a whole slide on it. But 
the main takeaway are light skin, light eyes, light hair, because we absorb more of the radiation. We don't have that protective melanin that literally acts as a shield against the radiation. Does that mean that someone with darker skin tones can't get skin cancer or sunburn? No, absolutely not. We'll also touch on, you know, everyone can get skin cancer and skin cancer is not discriminatory. So everyone needs to be careful and everyone needs to wear sunscreen. So when talking about skin cancers, let me move my little head over to here. So there are main, two main categories of skin cancer. You have your non-melanoma skin cancer and your melanoma. So the basal cell that we have on the screen and the squamous cell are two types of skin cancer. And the number one cause of these skin cancers is long-term sun exposure, cumulative sun exposure. That means every time you drive in your car every day, sitting by a window, um, every soccer game you ever had, all of that sun exposure in time adds up and becomes additive and accumulates. And then that's where you start to develop these specific types of skin cancer. A basal cell on the left, you can see this um, is linked strongly to sun exposure prior to the age of 18, just having a lot of early on sun exposures where we see later on in people's 40s, 50s, 60s, they start breaking out with these skin cancers. So a basal cell is locally destructive, meaning it usually doesn't spread throughout the body, but it'll continue to grow and ulcerate and bleed. And I've seen some the, sky, the size of golf balls on people's faces because they've been neglected for years and they have to get surgery and they end up disfigured. No one wants that. And then squamous cell carcinoma. These are the worst type of non-melanoma skin cancer because they have a higher uh, potential for metastasis, for spread. They, I've had patients, because I worked in dermatology for four years before this, that had squamous cell or basal cells on their face. I helped remove their lips. I helped remove the eyelids of a grown man. And you won't forget the pleading and the crying that they, he was screaming throughout it. Um, I've seen people lose their entire jaw from a squamous cell that metastasized to the bone, people who have lost their lungs because of these skin cancers. So it's not just that they look ugly, it's they can be life-threatening and they're not talked about enough. So people who have had these, right? Hugh Jackman, the Wolverine, if he can have skin cancer, like what makes you think that you're not going to get skin cancer? Caitlyn Jenner, she's an Olympian. She, she got skin cancer. So this is the other classification of skin cancer, the melanoma skin cancer. These are, this is the worst skin cancer. This is the, the skin cancer that kills people and it kills people quickly and it kills young people. This is a disease of the young. So the number one cause of melanoma are childhood sunburns, blistering sunburns. Melanoma is the most aggressive, deadliest skin cancer and it is the second most common cancer in those 15 to 29 years old. Like I said, this is a cancer of the young. Having five or more sunburns doubles your chances of melanoma. One blistering sunburn in childhood or adolescence also doubles your chances of melanoma. So I think this is so, so, so important to know about because I was exposed to the sun all the time when I was growing up in South Florida. I was playing soccer, I was at the beach with my friends. And when I turned 18, I had moles that were changing and I ended up needing surgery because they were kind of like precancers to melanoma because of my sun exposure. So I had firsthand experience about this and I wish someone had told me because I had no idea. So here's a video that we'll watch. Um, I think this, we'll just let you decide. Here's a Dear 16 year old me. Dear 16 year old me. Dear 16 year old me. Please don't get that perm. It's not as awesome as you think it's gonna be. You have to actually practice in order to learn to play guitar. Whiskey tastes even worse on the way up. Dear 16 year old me, there's going to be a new set of Star Wars movies. Don't watch them, they ruin everything. Dear 16 year old me, this is where they took the cancer out. It was something called melanoma. It's called malignant melanoma. Malignant melanoma. Malignant? That's not a very friendly word. You'll be diagnosed when you're 28. 
18. 36. 29. 22. It's a tumor that starts in your skin cells, the cells that give your hair and skin color. It's not just skin cancer. Well, it is. Well, it is. But not just the cut it out and it'll be fine kind, unfortunately. It's the kind that you have to catch before it spreads. Because it spreads so fast. So fast. To places like your liver, your lungs, your brain. Yours will be a really rare kind in your left eye. And that's when you'll find out that melanoma can show up on your tongue, the palms of your hands, and the soles of your feet. Your doctors will tell you you're lucky that you caught it early. Yours will tell you that you need aggressive treatment. I'll have to tell you it might take a year of chemotherapy. And you'll need to do some of the injections yourself. Dear 16-year-old me. You're doing OK. You're strong. But there are some things I want you to know. I wish I'd known. That one bad sunburn before you turn 18 doubles your chances of developing melanoma. That fair skin and red hair means that you're at a higher risk of getting it. As if ginger people didn't have enough problems. That you're at higher risk if you've got more than 50 moles. And if you have a weakened immune system or a family history of skin cancer. I want you to know the outlook is very good if we can catch it early. But you have less than a 10% chance of surviving more than five years if we don't. Dear 16-year-old me, spend more time with family. They mean everything. If I had one piece of advice for you, don't start the tanning bed. I know you want a healthy glow, but it's going to double my chances of getting melanoma. Sunscreen. Yes, I agree. It's a huge pain in the ass, but so worth it. Please. Your skin's like an elephant. It never forgets. Dear 16-year-old me, helping spread this message is how you'll honor Glenna's memory. At 16, she's already an incredible lifeguard. She loves the sun and the beach and tanning, but she just doesn't know. She'll be diagnosed when she's 22 and will lose her battle when she's just 26. I want you to know, because it's melanoma that's going to take the strongest man you know, your best friend, and the love of your life. Dear 16-year-old me, Don't be afraid. This isn't about being afraid. I want you to be aware that melanoma is a young person's disease. It is the second most common cancer in children and teenagers, and one of the most common in young adults. And it can be deadly. I want you to know you're not helpless. This is a cancer that shows itself right there on the outside of it. Start checking your skin. Please check. Get to know your skin. Get to know your skin. Start checking your skin. If a new mole shows up, or if when you have, starts to change color, or size, or shape, or feels different. If something seems out of place, get your doctor to have a look as soon as possible. Know what to look for and get help. These are all signs your skin could be developing cancer. You brush your teeth every day, maybe even floss. Okay, we both know you don't floss. But just once a month, I want you to check. It takes 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Dear 16-year-old me, I do realize you're not actually going to see this, but someone else will, and it'll make a difference to them. Dear someone else. Dear somebody else. If you're watching this, send it to a 16-year-old you care about. Send it to anyone who is once 16. Or soon will be 16. Send this. And check yourself. Educate yourself. You can... Okay, so these are some people who have died um, and not died for melanoma. Sorry about that. So first one, obviously, Bob Marley. He died from a melanoma on his foot. And then John McCain, the senator, had metastatic melanoma to his brain. And then Khloe Kardashian, who is not dead, had melanoma on her back. So there's something called the ABCDEs of melanoma that I think everyone should be aware of, um, especially if you're, you know, like a lifeguard or something out in the sun all the time having this cumulative sun exposure. Um, and these are just ways to detect melanoma, melanoma, to know if one of your moles is suspicious and whether or not you should get it checked out or not. So A stands for asymmetry. Every mole should be symmetrical on either side. B for border. It should be round and smooth. We don't want weird, jaggedy edges. C for color. It should be one color. Diameter should be smaller than one-fourth of an inch. And E for evolving. Moles that are changing, symptomatic, they should all get checked out. And you're probably wondering about the duck. That is because there's something called the ugly duckling sign, which in dermatology is a sign where one of your moles looks different than the rest. And typically that means 
it needs a biopsy because it's suspicious. Why is your body making something that it looks totally different from everything else it's made up until this point? So something else to be aware of on your own body. So photo aging. This is another side effect of sunburns and sun exposure. I'm sure everyone's seen this picture of this woman. She was a truck driver. You can see the side where she has a lot of wrinkles and, and sun damage and photo aging is the side that her window was on when she would drive. You can see a significant sun damage versus the other side that was more protected. And then when we look over here at what sun damage looks like, in my opinion, Hulk Hogan, when I look at him, he just looks like a walking skin cancer. And he also looks like a 7-Eleven hot dog. So I don't think anyone wants to look like that. So this is all the more reason if you don't want wrinkles and you don't want to look like a hot dog, wear sunscreen and protect your skin. Easy as that. You can see here this very legitimate graph shows the relationship between sun damage and attractiveness. Whereas sun damage increases, so does the amount of ugly. It's a clear um, relationship. Okay, so let's talk about tanning beds. Uh, well, this is my face whenever anyone tells me that they use a tanning bed. And then in the corner, that is how they will look in a couple years after using the tanning bed. So a tan is not healthy. Everyone thinks, ooh, everyone thinks a tan is healthy. A tan is not healthy. A tan is a way your body is protecting itself against radiation burns, and it's a physical sign of damage. Your body is making more melanocytes, having more melanin in order to protect yourself like a shield. So it's not healthy, and it's not a, it's not a good sign. If you have a tan, that means that you've been burned by radiation. Using indoor tanning beds before the age of 35 increases your risk of melanoma by 59%. And more people develop skin cancer because of indoor tanning than develop lung cancer because of smoking. I feel like that really like hit me hard, that fact, because you hear all of this talk about lung cancer and smoking and all of these ads, but then you hear crickets when it comes to, to, to skin cancer. So, and tanning bed use and sunburns. So I thought that was something that was really noteworthy. So some need to know facts. If I'm going to leave you three facts to know, these are them. One, the sun, is, the sun is strongest between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Do what you can to avoid sun during those hours. I know that's not possible, um, and you can't live your whole life afraid of the sun. So do what you can if you do have to be out do, during those hours. Be smart. Sun protection, seek shade, wear hats. And then two, even if you don't burn, you can still get skin cancer. So people say all the time, I don't need sunscreen because I don't burn. That doesn't matter. What we just talked about with the basal cell and squamous cell being cumulative sun exposure, even without sunburns, can still lead to skin cancer. And piggybacking off of that, you need to wear sunscreen every day for that same reason. It's cumulative. Even if you say you're not outside, you just go to work, you just go to school and then go home, it adds up. Driving in your car, sitting next to a window, it's not worth it in the long run. Just wear your sunscreen. So again, we kind of touched on this before. Who's most at risk? Light skin, light eyes, light hair. They don't have that protective melanin. Those who spend more time in the sun, duh. Those with a family history of skin cancer. And then I thought this was interested. interesting. Those with a bad attitude about sun protection had more skin cancers. Those who thought like sunscreen wasn't cool or didn't want to use it or didn't think it was important or thought it was stupid, they had significantly more skin cancers. And anyone who doesn't use any sun protection is at risk, obviously. And then those who burn easily. The easier you burn, the more DNA mutations you're having, more likelihood of having skin cancer. So sun protection. So just ways to protect yourself. So hats. Super easy. Am I asking you to wear like what this guy has on? No, that's social suicide. But like this girl has a cool billabong wide brimmed hat on. She looks cool. You guys can wear that. Um, so hats, long sleeves, so ultraviolet protection factor, UPF, this is the equivalent to SPF, but it's found in clothing. So you can get long sleeve shirts that have this UPF in it, and a UPF of 50 blocks 98% of UV radiation. So it's better than just wearing a regular t-shirt. Obviously, a regular t-shirt is better than nothing, but getting one with UPF is, mwah. 
Uh, you want sunglasses with 100% protection from both UVA and UVB radiation. Using umbrellas, seeking shade, avoiding peak sun hours between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m., and then using sunscreen every day. Lather that puppy up like a slug. So just going on to the sunscreen, how to properly use it. So I have a wonderful picture of Haley Bieber and Justin, and I put that because Haley Bieber uses this Elta MD sunscreen, and she posts about it on social media and raves about it. It's what I use. Anyone who's been in dermatology is probably going to recommend Elta MD tinted sunscreen because it is the best thing ever. You want a sunscreen? I honestly, you can get sunscreen from a dumpster as long as you're using sunscreen and as long as it's not expired. I don't care. Whatever you use works. Make sure it's broad spectrum, meaning protects against both UVA and UVB, and you want it to be at least SPF 30 because that's going to protect 97% of the radiation coming from the sun. You want to apply sunscreen 30 minutes prior to sun exposure, reapplying every two hours. And there are two main types of sunscreens, inorganic and organic. Um, I prefer inorganic because they're a physical barrier. It's like just putting a shield on your skin. Those have either zinc oxide or titanium dioxide as their main ingredient. So those are the ones I would suggest. You also have your organic sunscreens, which means that they absorb into your skin, into your cells, and then absorb the heat emitted and the radiation emitted from the sun, and then they express it off as heat. So it's actually absorbed into your skin. Um, and this active ingredient is oxybenzone. However, ooh, this is what is bleaching our coral reefs. So that is why I'm going to suggest some of the other sunscreens. And the amount that you want to use is like the size of a small grape. Like you don't need to like go overboard, but you want to make sure that you have a nice thick layer on. So here's a video we'll watch. I think this will convince you to wear sunscreen because I thought it was actually kind of cool. I won't live up to any expectations. What you see is what you get. And worse yet, I can give an explanation for why it's gray on your side. Better yet, I'll give you an indication for why you're feeling deprived. We'll never let lack of an imagination keep us locked up inside.
Okay, so my parting words. Overall, skin cancer can happen to anyone, at any age, any gender, any race. I can't say it enough. It doesn't discriminate. You don't need to be outside for a long time to get skin cancer. It's cumulative. Wear sunscreen every day. It adds up. You still absorb radiation on a cloudy day. Just because you don't feel yourself burning doesn't mean that you're not. Sunburns are bad. Sunscreen is good. Check your skin because this can save your life. Thanks. Oh, and now you can do the post-presentation questionnaire.